friends. Welcome to another book talk with Livingston Parish Library. My name is Danielle Durr. I am the youth manager at the Denham Springs Walker Branch. And today, the books I have for you are all things thrills, chills, and mysteries. All of these thrilling books that I have for you today are on the 6th through 8th grade lyric list and the 9th through 12th grade literic list. They are all available on Hoopla, Cloud Library, or RB Digital. So let's get started. A fun fact about me that you probably don't know is I am a scaredy cat. I do not like scary things. I get scared very easily. I have been scared in the library plenty of times by people just walking around and existing. Even though I don't like spooky things, apparently everyone loves the spooky because we get tons of requests for scary books, horror books, spooky books, ghost stories, all of it. So today is your lucky day. This first book is on the 6th through 8th grade lyric list. It is definitely in the spooky category. It is called Small Spaces by Katherine Arden. Small Spaces follows our main character, Ollie, who was suffering a major tragic loss. And she copes with this by just diving into books. After a series of events where she stops a classmate from being bullied, she ends up by this river where she sees this crazy woman crying and it looks like she's about to throw a book into the river. Ali is obviously not okay with this. She starts talking to the woman and the woman tells her to avoid large spaces at night and stick to small. And she's like, wow, this is crazy. So she steals the book and runs away. She's obviously still dealing with her trauma but it helps her out in the long run. This book is very interesting. There's about this girl named Beth who is inheriting a farm and these two brothers who fall in love with her and all of a sudden, all of this spooky stuff starts happening. There's talk of a smiling man and then people start disappearing, like all of us. She stays up really late reading it. Then she goes on a field trip the next day to a farm that coincidentally has the same last name as the people in her book. She starts seeing all of these similarities and then all of a sudden it's almost nightfall. The bus breaks down and the bus driver gives them a very ominous warning. And Ollie looks down at her watch that belonged to her mother and has been broken. It has a countdown and it says run. What would you do? So for people like me who are not on board with the spooky train, I'll give you this warning. One, do not read this book in the dark. Two, do not Google creepy scarecrow images because you will see a scarecrow looking at you through your window and you will not be able to sleep. Even though I shouldn't have read this book at night, I really enjoyed it. And now I'm tempted to read the sequel called Dead Voices in the daytime. Another fun fact about me that no one asked for is I don't like the spooky, but I love ghosts. The next book today is for all the ghost story fans out there. It is also on the sixth through eighth grade lyric list, and it is called City of Ghosts by Victoria Schwab. Cassidy Blake is just like you and me, except her parents are best-selling authors with a new TV show, and she sort of died and now can see ghosts. Let me explain. So Cassidy's parents are authors of a middle grade YA ghost hunting series called The Inspectors, and it's widely popular, so they get a TV show off offer to go to these most haunted cities all over the world and be inspectors and talk about the ghost stories. Cassidy's parents don't necessarily believe in ghosts, unlike Cassidy, who after a near-death experience, she can see ghosts and she's actually being haunted by her ghost best friend, Jacob. I wonder if a ghost best friend can defeat scarecrows. Because of her parents' new show, they pack up their belongings, including Jacob, and head to Edinburgh, Scotland, one of the most haunted places in the world. As you can imagine, Cassidy is gonna run into all the ghosts, including the sinister Red Raven, who legend has it, steals the lives of children. 
City of Ghosts is a lot of fun. It has really great storytelling and atmosphere, and it's perfect for fans of ghosts and ghost stories like me, but it probably won't keep you up all night. Just stay away from Google if you have an overactive imagination. She's really rounding out my bucket list with the sequel, Tunnel of Bones, which is set in Paris. And the third one, which will be published sometime soon, is called Bridge of Souls, set in New Orleans. So we're going to switch it up for this last book. It is on the 9th through 12th grade teen reader's choice list. It is for fans of true crime podcasts or double whammy true crime podcasts. It is called Sadie by Courtney Summers. Sadie is highly acclaimed, has won lots of awards, has many starred reviews, but I will say that it is probably our most content mature book on the lists this year. I wouldn't say it's graphic. Most of the issues take place off page, but it is definitely raw, emotional, dark. But I've learned working with teens that they really like the dark, heavy books. They really like to feel something and kind of get punched in the gut by books. Um, and it really shows because Sadie is most often checked out from our libraries. So this book is told in two points of view. The first one is Sadie's point of view. And she has had a very difficult life and it's all been made worse because she has a stutter. And the only time that she feels any worth is caring for her little sister Maddie. And in the beginning of the book, you find out that Maddie has been killed. So Sadie, knowing that there's no justice for girls like Maddie or Sadie, she goes on this quest for revenge. The second point of view is set up as a podcast. So radio personality West McCray is given this assignment to do podcasts ba based on small forgotten towns across America. And he hears Sadie's story. So he starts investigating and interviewing the people that knew Sadie and Maddie. And he starts to realize that there's more to this story and he becomes obsessed and he's trying to find missing Sadie. The alternating points of views between Sadie and the podcast work really well together because you see Sadie's story and she doesn't necessarily give you all the clues. And then you hear the podcast and you start getting a little bit more of it. And it may be wrong. It may be right. Like it's very mysterious and it's a really good balance. And I would definitely recommend listening to the audiobook version of this because it really gives you that podcast feel um, and it's done really well. This book is so interesting because it sheds light on so many issues that you just don't think about but you know exist. And it gives a voice to these lost girls that you hear about all the time. And it's so realistic. Be prepared. This book is really heavy. It will hit you hard and you will not see that ending coming and you probably won't be prepared for it. So that is it for our thrills, chills, and mystery books on the Literic and Lyric list this year. If you've read any of these books, let us know what you think of them. Or if you want to share some of your favorite mysteries, ghost stories, spooky books, let us know in the comments. And until next time, happy reading.